hardest part of doing this in the SDM is knowing where to find the different bits that you need to configure and also kind of the order, although it will scream at you if you get it in the wrong order. So that said, let's go ahead and click edit and add this domain name. And you get a pop-up here and it's pretty obvious what you have to do. You can have the host if you want to change your host name, you can do that at this time you can then go ahead and put in whatever domain name it even gives you a little example you could also set up a banner a message of the day banner At the end I'll briefly touch on this uh, again I'm gonna tell you to go to that other video series but when you configure SSH it actually throws off the order in which different banners are presented to users so normally the message of the day banner it's sometimes referred to as MOTD will be shown when a user is trying to access the device basically before you log in when you enable SSH this actually shows up after you log in so it's good to know about that there will be a slide at the end again I refer you to the other video lesson for a whole lot more detail on that and once you fill out that pop-up you'll get put back to the router properties page and here you can just do a verification to make sure that you have your host name and your domain name set up and we do so we're good to go let's go to the next step and this is probably the trickiest step as you can see this is the first step that's out of order it's actually step six generally it's to set the VTY line authentication to use either local or to use triple A and there are actually three methods of doing this the first method is kind of cheating if you're trying to use the SDM is to actually log in to your router and issue the command so you go into the VTY lines and you're saying for the five VTY lines, you know, starts at zero, ends at four, I want you to use the login authentication method of local, which basically says I want you to use a local username password to authenticate user. That's the quick and dirty, that's how you do it on the CLI. You can go ahead and do this, but technically you're not using SDM. In order to do this on the SDM, there's really not an easy method to do this. You've got two methods you can use, and the first is to again kind of cheating under configure click that way at the bottom you're gonna see this little folder that says configuration management open that up the first one's gonna be config editor click that and that's gonna give you this information over here it's gonna show you the running configuration so you can take a look at it and in this case we see under the running configuration that we don't have login specified so we don't have it using a specific authentication method we need to remedy that situation so down here you've got a couple of tabs go on the edit configuration what this does is you're gonna tell SDM to send this configuration to the router so you're gonna type in your line VTY04 login local make sure you hit enter after that make sure everything's spelled correctly spaced correctly that's the problem with this is there's really it's not dummy proof you can make errors here so you really need to be careful when you're doing this and then you've got some options down here and you want to choose merge with running config don't choose replace running config because that's going to go ahead and erase your running config and just have this VTY line configuration. So you want to merge with running configuration. Pretty important to get this right here. Go ahead and click that and that will send this to your router. It's basically the same thing as logging in and issuing these commands. And then you can check the running configuration afterward to make sure that it took. And at that point you should see this up here. here. Alright, I told you there were three methods. This is kind of a hack because it allows you to enable AAA but if you're not using AAA, if you're using in like in our example, we're going to be using the local username database, you don't need to enable AAA to use that. There is a way to enable AAA and then point it to the local username database, which is what this step does. And I don't know what Cisco's preferred method for this is, if it's to, you know, send the configuration from the config editor or to use this method. I'd know all three of these actually, because you're going to need to know all three. I would say if it was down to using the SDM, probably step three is what they're going to want you to use because it's native to the SDM. It is a little bit of a hack if you're using the local username password but anywho here's what you do. You go under configure and then you're going to go down to AAA. There will be a folder called AAA. Go ahead and click on that. You should get all this here. You'll be able to see here what your AAA configuration is and generally it's going to be none. You're going to want to go ahead and click on enable AAA. There's a button up here. You're going to get a pop-up. It's going to warn you what's going on here. Watch out, blah, 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 blah. Do you want to enable this? Go ahead, click yes. And it's going to go ahead and enable it for you. And basically what it's done is you can see here it hasn't set up any servers or groups. So right there is a big thing that's telling you that this is a local. Authentication policies. You've got login, eou.1x. The one there, that means true. So we haven't turned on ELU or .1x, which is a good thing. So we've got login and we don't have a server set up. So it's going to be using the local login. So it's really setting up AAA to use a method that just uses the local username database. So again, kind of a hack, a little counterintuitive, 
probably more configuration than you really need to do this. But to do this purely from an SDM standpoint, I think this is a method that you would use. Whew. So after all of that, we're now finally ready to do step four, which is actually going to turn on SSH, and we do that by generating the RSA keys. We've seen this before, where this is located, uh, configuration, then under router access, open that guy up, and you should see this SSH. Click on that. Remember earlier we saw that if your iOS version does not support SSH, it would give you the big you know, error message. We can see here this is what's going to happen if it does support SSH. It's going to say currently disabled on your router and it's going to tell you you need to generate a key. So if you see this, you know that your iOS version supports SSH. And it doesn't take a PhD to figure out what we got to do next. Monkey clicks this generate RSA key. And when we click that, we're going to get a pop up. It's going to ask you for a modulus size. Now, if you remember the modulus, I believe the default is 512. It runs from 512 up to 2048. Well, yeah, there I can cheat, I guess, look over here. But if you don't know what your modulus size is supposed to be, Cisco recommends 1024. Basically, your modulus size tells you the strength of your key. So the bigger the modulus, the stronger your key is. So your first instinct is say, well, yeah, just crank this fucker up to 11. Let's go ahead and put in 2048. The thing you got to keep in mind, though, is that the bigger the key, stronger the encryption, that means that it's going to take more CPU cycles to encrypt and decrypt your communications. So if you have a device that, you know, maybe an older device like a 2600 that supports this, you might want to take that in consideration. As always, you got to weigh security versus usability. If it's taking up too much CPU cycles to encrypt, decrypt, go ahead and lower that uh, modulus. I think 1024 is pretty much what you want to standardize on. But if you don't know, uh, you could put in some random number here. I put in 666. It tells you here the modulus, if it's between 512 and 1024, it's got to be in steps of 64. Otherwise, if you're going above that, you've got two choices, 1536 or 2048. Probably not bad information to know for the exam. So in this case, we're just going to go ahead and specify 1024 and hit enter. Okay, rather. So after that, we've actually generated the RSA keys. So we're running SSH. You have to create the local username or specify AAA. If you're going to use AAA, we would have done that earlier in that AAA configuration. It's going to prompt you for SSH credentials. You can just use the same credentials that you're using because actually this should exist on your device. I don't know why it prompts for it. And booyah, this is what you're going to see when you have SSH configured and set up. Again, you should be put back in the screen, but to get there, configure router access SSH and it will tell you that SSH is enabled on your router and that the RSA key exists. This is actually a good step to commit to memory because this is how you would verify that SSH is set up on a device. So if you were to connect to the router via SDM and you wanted to verify whether SSH was set up or not, you'd go to configure router access SSH and if you see this then you know that it's set up. And here we are at the quote unquote optional but highly recommended uh, step seven. That is to disable Telnet access by removing Telnet from the list of input protocols on the VTY line. So to get to this, uh, again, we're under configure because we're doing configuration. We're going to go to another area here and we're going to go to, well, actually, we're in the same area, router access. Rather than clicking on SSH, we're going to go ahead and click on VTY. Go ahead and open that up when you do you will see the configuration details for your VTY lines. And in this case, you can see, you know, I've got all five lines set up and the input and output protocols allowed are none. This is kind of a misnomer because when it says none, it really means that all the protocols that are allowed on the VTY line are allowed. It actually means all. None means that none are filtered. You haven't tied it down to any. So this is a default. By default, like I said, Telnet SSH, uh, R login, and a bunch of other, I think there's like eight to 12 other ones that are allowed by default. So what we want to do is we want to set the input protocol to only allow SSH. You can do it with the output protocol as well, but there might be times when you want to utilize Telnet from the, the device. So I wouldn't limit that. Um, you do want to limit it inbound. So go ahead and click edit and you'll get this pop up and there's a bunch of stuff on here. Basically all you have to do is deselect Telnet and select SSH. I think these are should be deselected by default. So you can see from the SDM you can tie it down but you can only tie it down to Telnet or SSH. And for most users that's going to be fine. You're not using our login or like I said any of the the deck protocols or whatever else is on there. So go ahead and make sure SSH is clicked uh, and Telnet is not clicked and go ahead and hit OK. And once we've done that we can see that now the input protocol allowed 
SS protocols, but actually we're singular in this case because we're only allowing SSH. Again, good to commit this to memory because this is how you would verify what protocols are allowed on your VTY line. So it's configure router access VTY and then it will show you that information.